What's up, world? It's your girl, Bobby Penn, with another episode of the Put Yourself On podcast. Since it's a new year, I figured I would act a little brand new. And I'm bringing to you a YouTube live with two amazing authors with powerful stories. And we're going to have a little girl talk as well as we inspire each other, motivate, encourage, and keep you guys entertained. So I have my first guest, Ashley W. Gillette. Yeah. <laughs> The author of Red Flag Run. Yes. As well as Mary Honeybee Morrison. And she's written several books. And we're going to get into the different topics and subject matters that are associated with them. How are you ladies doing tonight? I am good. How are you? I'm excellent. I'm excited to talk to you guys and hear about your stories as well as talk about this um, R. Kelly situation, y'all. I know it's going to get real interesting. Yes. But before we jump into it, Ashley, you were like saying something so cute. I was yeah, like, oh, I catch this. <laughs> okay, so I'm so excited because I literally have, I would say, if not 10 or more books of Mary B upstairs in my house right now. It started with Soulmates Dissipate and it just kind of like gravitated and just kept moving on. I'm like, I have a whole collection of her. And it's I I, I can't believe that I'm sitting here right now with you on live talking to you like. <laughs> I read all your books. Thank you. <laughs> crazy. Thank you. And look at that background. Like I yes. need to set my, I need to set my game up. <laughs> <laughs> one book, at, one, one book at a time. I'm sorry. Say that again. Oh, we were saying one book at a time. That's how we get there. That's what I was saying to Ashley. She'll yes. get there. Yes. Yes. So, honeybee, you are at somewhere around 23 to 25 books. Tell me how you got your start writing. Oh my gosh. A relationship that went bad. A lot of people do the same thing. You know, he ain't gonna act right. You know, but we stayed together. I say five years, he said seven. But anyway, when he said, will you marry me? I said no. And I sobered the hell up. I'm like, oh no. A lot of women go into bad relationships and it was crazy. So I said I was going to write that story. And Ashley, you might be able to relate to that, too, because there's so many life experiences that mm -hmm. motivate us to write in the first place. But I didn't write it about him. I mean, it was about him, kind of, but it was for you. Yeah. a whole lot of money. He was just the inspiration. Okay. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. I had to all my my book, Red Flags Run. I literally wrote about me dating uh, in my 20s. And it was basically bad, 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 bad. But um, they were all the inspiration to write my book and to like try to help people to like stop um, getting into bad relationships. If you see red flags, you need to basically run because it doesn't get no better. Yeah. It doesn't get better. So would some of your red flags actually potentially be the head games that um, Honey Bee is discussing in her book? Um, would you guys, I don't know who wants to go first, but would you mind, I guess, explaining your most recent work? Okay. Well, okay, I'll just go first. I just, okay, so I released my book, Red Flags Run, in 2017. I'm, I'm actually currently working on book two for um, spring 2019. So I'm excited about that. So I basically wrote, um, I broke it down in relationships and dating, where I saw red flags in the beginning, how I ignored them, and how I had stalkers, men threatening my life, men taking my money. Like a lot of, I had a lot of self esteem issues, didn't love myself how I should. There was a lack of self love and it was just a lot of stuff that played into me dealing with the bad relationships just because they were cute or it was just a good look. And, you know, and I always, even though I saw it, I was like, oh, it's okay. I can fix it. And it was not okay. I couldn't fix it. And that's what led me to even write my book. And right now book two is I'm using my friend's stories because, you know, we have friends with crazy stories as well. So that's what I'm working on. You know, um, I'm really excited about um, using my friends' pla uh, platform to bring awareness. And um, my whole thing is you don't have time to waste time. So I dedicated my book to my friend who was killed by her boyfriend. They were only together for two months. Mm -hmm. So in 2016, they started dating in September, 2000, um, and then November, two months later, he killed her around Thanksgiving weekend. So, and that was when I actually handed my book over to the publicist and I said, I have to dedicate this book to her. And this is one of the reasons why I have to get the word out because it's, it's, it's real out here. Too it's real. real. I'm so sorry you had to endure that, but I applaud your, your courage to share your story anyway and, and use that as motivation to help others. 
Honey yes. Bee, why don't you tell me about your um your latest book, Head Games? Well, I decided to write head games because men play head games and men play head games. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, women got to realize the good punah tang 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 that they have because that's what the guys are going in for. Honey, he buy the car, the clothes. This is the book right here. But it's like four guys. They decide they're going to play this game and to see who can date, dick, and dump the most women in 30 days. But you can't just like dump her. You have to actually do it publicly or on social mm -hmm. media. The game gets real, right? But it's just a game to them. But the other side of it, you begin to see how they actually destroy lives. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, men who are playing games, they're not even satisfied mm -hmm. at the end of the day. And a lot of guys aren't even good in bed. If nope. you want to just keep it real. Okay. <laughs> You know, okay. That's a red flag if he's slinging bad dick. <laughs> you said I could say whatever now, Bobby. I did. I told you to keep it 100. I know yeah. we were going to come out the gate with it, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tone it back down. But no, seriously, you talk about red flags, broke. Broke mm -hmm. is bad because a man that's broke and have no money is definitely going to be looking for your coin, honey. Mm. So you better not get with a guy who's broke. Let him pay. You know, Guard your heart and guard your purse. Right. <laughs> exactly. All day, every day. So, you know, with head games, you have the guy who's been with the girl. He loves the way she loves him. So she, he's been with her for like maybe eight years, but he's never going to marry her. Never had any intentions on marrying her. It's just that he loves the way that she loves him. So mm -hmm. it's not that he's not going anywhere. It's that for the most part, she's not going anywhere. And that's why he lies and he cheats. And then I talk about the guy with PTSD because mm. that's real. And PTSD can be a guy who was incarcerated or a guy who's been in the military. It's all the same. Living in a little cell that's four by six, honey, they come out of there, they ain't right in the head. You yeah. know, you're trying to save him. Don't try to save him. Just let him go back home to his mama. Right. And sit down for a minute. But anyway, you know, I get off track too when I start talking about this. <laughs> so, these honey, guys are amazing. Amazing. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bobby. I was going to ask. So are your, your stories are nonfiction, correct? Well, I have two nonfiction books, but my, I write fiction. So 24 okay. to 26 books are fiction. Okay. okay. So where do you draw your inspiration from? Because obviously there's some real elements that go into these characters. Are these bad experiences you've had or just knowing what you don't want or your friends like Ashley? Where do you draw your, your inspiration? You know, Ashley's story is deep. And I really commend Ashley for actually coming forth and being able to write about what really happened. For mm -hmm. me, like a lot of times, I write at the bar. I go to the bar. I go to the cafe. I'm always talking to guys. I talk to men a lot, right? But I don't give them a break. So I'm just going to be me and say what's on my mind, you know, but I just find stories everywhere. I could be watching television, but my imagination is, is, is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I see. <laughs> up here. So, so yeah, I draw inspiration from everywhere. So Ashley, as someone who is writing about... Um, True facts, how much of your experience in your book can you relate to what Honey Bee was just describing? Because I know um, you can list off some of the red flags that you've seen that you're, you're warning young sisters about. So why don't you tell me some of the red flags and like how crazy is it that even though she's pulling this from her imagination, it's so real. It's it, is real. it is real. Um, like I would say, I, a first day that I went on with a guy in a park, he told me he was in love with me. And I should have ran the first night, like, honestly. And when I tell you that was the shortest relationship and the hardest, it was bad. Like, that, those, he was outside my house stalking me, threatening me, leaving notes on my car, threatening to have his sisters come do stuff to me. It was really bad. But honestly, when, when you were talking just now, um, um, honey, I immediately thought of my friend. She's literally, she's been with her boyfriend for 15 years. They have two kids. And she treats him like a king and she wants marriage, but he just give him, it's like a puppet strings. Like he's, he's dragging her along and feeding her the stuff. Like when I was in my relationships, it literally la didn't last more than a year. Like it took me a while to get out, but I wasn't going to stay for 15 years and 12 years and stuff like that. So um, she said that I was like, well, I got, I got to get this book to my friend because it's the head games. 
she wants marriage. She says she wants marriage. She wants this and that and the third. And he's not giving it to her, but he loves the way he he loves the way she loves her because she does everything for him. And I'm like, okay. But yeah, I mean, as far as me, um, it was a lot of head games. They were playing a lot of head games. And even though people might say, oh, I didn't have my father in my life, I did. I had my father in life. I, I lived with both of my parents. I had love. It was just a lot of stuff that I wasn't taught because they're pastors and they didn't teach me about street smarts. They didn't teach me about don't let this guy play you, beat you over the head. It was a lot of stuff that I had to learn on my own. And it was a lot of stuff that I was seeking outside of my home. So do you think, I'm assuming it was a strict background. Do you think the strict yes. background was also why you were chasing connection, I guess, maybe outside of, of your nucleus family? Yeah, it was it was a very strict background, <laughs> like parents dropping me to high school, like dropping me off. Like they only talked to me about scripture, never like don't let a man do this, like your love. Like it was just a lot of stuff that I just had to learn on my own. And and it was a bad experience. But I, now I learn and now I'm, I'm doing better. But it was just a lot of me having to go out there and figure it out on my own. Yeah, definitely strict background. Definitely. So, Honeybee, um, tell me a little bit about your, I guess, backstory before we meet you, this colorful, lively personality. Have you always been like this or has this developed from some experience? Well, coming up, actually, we didn't have a lot of money. We were poor. They didn't talk about sex. And I always say poor is a state of mind, not a state of being. So, you know, it's like no matter how much your period have sex. You know, we're still curious. So I started having sex at 14. At the age of 14, I was actually sexually active. By 15, I was pregnant, you know, because you don't understand the dynamics of it. And the one thing that I learned early on is that a lot of guys really don't care about the female pleasure side of intimacy. We want to protect our daughters and tell them, oh, don't do this and don't do that. You know, and I don't want my daughter to read maybe a Mary Honey B. Morrison book because it's too sexual and she might start thinking about sex. I don't want to give her contraceptive so she won't have a baby because then she's going to start thinking about sex. When that's all that men think about is sex. You know, it's like so you have to arm and prepare the girl. So that's why I'm all about female empowerment. And for me, just growing up, once I had that first orgasm at 16, I was shooting hookies, skipping school. I was at the hotel, honey, at 8 o'clock in the morning trying to get mine in. Wow. <laughs> you know, that phone call come in. Oh, the teacher said you were late to school. Oh, the bus broke down. The bus broke down at least every other day. But um, they still didn't fix that bus. <laughs> right, right. They have to get there. So what I write about is really me. It's not me trying to be somebody else. It's the sexual liberation side of it. I believe in it for women and maybe we can get to it later on in this discussion. But honey, there are at least 22 types of orgasms that a woman can have and I can break them all down to you. You know, so men Would you please? Because I didn't know that. They can't you have a and I, I thought I, you know, I ain't going to tell all my business on here. But, you know, I didn't think I was that green, but damn, 22 <laughs> orgasms, please educate me now. <laughs> I am not living right. What? Oh, I'll try. Look, you want, let me give you the list real quick because I had to write it down because there's so many and I'm talking about it. But there's a clitoral, vaginal, nipple, full body, oral, foreplay combo, and multiple. And that's two different types of orgasms for those of you who don't know. Anal, kago, erogenous zone, mental stimulation, fantasy induced, vulva vestible, squirting. There's touchless. There's uh, the wet dream orgasm, tantric sex, soul mating. There's the hour long orgasm. So you can go 60 minutes or you can go 60 seconds. I want my girls to get that 60 second orgasm in because before he start, honey, you done. <laughs> <laughs> See how they feel. Right. <laughs> three to seven minutes. So if we can get hours in in 60 seconds and be like, what are we going to eat today? I'm right. done. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think 60 minutes is a little too much for me. I don't know if I need all of that, but yes. Team too much. Well, okay, so I remember watching Red Table Talk and Jada Pinkett's mom, I forget her name, they call her um, Grammy, Grammy or something like that. She, she was, was saying great. that it was important for her to learn and know that she could please herself before she went seeking that from a man. So how does a woman... 
healthy in a healthy way come to embrace her sexuality in a, in a society where we're kind of not allowed to, you know what I mean? We're supposed to be this delicate flower. You can't touch us. We're not supposed to think about sex until marriage, but guys, like you've already said, can start expressing that as soon as they start feeling those emotions. So how can we kind of take our sexuality back? And, and both of you can answer that. I'm going to let Ashley go first because I'm going to tell about Oh, Lord, I was hoping you would answer. <laughs> I mean, I <laughs> Lord, well, I'm actually, like... from your experience, right, where you were kind of in a situation where perhaps you felt powerless. Mm -hmm. So how how have you worked through that and, and try to take your sexuality, your person back? Honestly, um, after the bad experience of, of dating, I, I haven't, I've literally been single for, since I was 30, I'm 35 now. Cause I had to take a break cause there was a lot of damage that was done and I had to like take a break and just work on me. So, um, I had to just learn about myself, get my, get, get everything together for myself. Cause my head was, it was, it was not in a good place and I was allowing the men to just use me and I, it was a lot of damage that was done. And, um, I, I've been, I haven't, you know, I haven't, I haven't been sexually active since, um, since I've been 30, but, um, you know, I, it was just a lot that I had to do. I had to like, just take a moment and just focus on me and, you know, just, you know, just work on Ashley because there was a, a lot of damage done. And even with, you know, even watching the R. Kelly stuff, there was a lot of stuff that I related, um, that I could relate to when I was younger, when I was 11, from 11 to about 17, but we'll get into that portion. But yeah, it was a lot of stuff that I had to just take a break from and honestly um i haven't been there yet <laughs> not yet uh yeah so which is that's fair and that's honest yeah. um you know what i mean and i think that's important well i i, I want to hear honeybee's thoughts on yeah. this i feel like we're going to disagree but i was raised in a, a christian environment a very religious environment as well and we're taught that like as you have sex with people, you're intimate, you're literally sharing a part of yourself. So, so it makes sense to just take a minute. Exactly. Oh my God. So tight. Breaking. I want to know how to break those. <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? Like, that's what I had so to work on. That's what I was working on, to be honest. Mm -hmm. That's what I was working on. But go ahead. No, I was going to say, I, I feel like that's so, super healthy to be whole before you can share yourself, right? Like, yeah. how else do you do that? Um, so, honey, I know you're ready. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yes. Look, it's like I believe that really, like with women, a lot of it starts when they are first born. And what I mean by that is that the second you take a baby doll, I don't have one sitting on my desk right now, but if I did, I'd show it to you. The second you put a baby doll in a girl's arms, you are teaching her to love something outside of herself. So mm -hmm. it's hard to break a soul tie if in the beginning, your gut instinct, the way you were raised, you had this baby that you just rocking back and forth. She go everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. And you caught these motherly instincts before you even know whether you like crayons or whether you just like a fire truck. You just don't know what you really like because they program us wow. as women right. from the very beginning. And then you get the boyfriend in high school and people are wondering why well, she don't need to be with him because he's not right for her. But you have already told her she's supposed to take care of somebody. Mm. So she had the baby, the baby ain't real. The baby's not real till it gets here because the baby's going to cost you what? Close to three hundred thousand dollars to even raise this baby from conception, from birth to actually getting him out of college or high school. And see, those Lord. things aren't real. But if you ask a man for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, the next time he say he want to go half on a baby, where's your half? I'm gonna need your half up front, nigga. <laughs> that's the real half. Okay. And that's why I said, don't mess with no broke man. Because if you having sex with a broke man, you have a baby by a broke man, you gonna end up having to foot that three hundred thousand dollar bill. You know, or by yourself you have to do it. And you know, it's just so many things. With women, you know, I work a lot right now. I'm a workaholic, so in part, I'm dickless by default because I work so much. But mm -hmm. I can't deal with a handicapped dick because a lot of guys don't know what they're doing. They don't want to be educated. The minute you try to tell them something, they got this attitude. Mm -hmm. Why do you have an attitude? A woman can't touch herself or bring a toy into the bedroom without <laughs> the attitude. I don't even know what the problem is. We have, as women, have got to start speaking up. I don't cook. I don't clean. You gonna take me out? We going out to eat? Yes, you can pay for vacations and trips and plane tickets and this and that. And women are supposed to be getting all that. 
before you take your clothes off. Now, if you just want to smash and get rid of that urge and stuff like that, at least make sure he's good in bed because some of them have done so fast. I can't it wasn't even, even worth it. I can't do it. And I could teach guys a lot of stuff, but I don't want to. And the reason why I don't want to is because a lot of them are selfish. So I'm trying to tell women mm -hmm. 60 second orgasm and leave him, leave him with blue balls and a heart on and see how he feel about it. Now, mm -hmm. does that get you in trouble? Cause I could see, first off, just this conversation alone. I know <laughs> men that would have a fit, like no relationships are supposed to be 50, 50. I ain't taking care of no woman. That's they a gold digger. Me. Girl, I, I already hear, I already know when they see this, the comments are going to be crazy. But aside from that, have you ever I'm found your, Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, we can visit that. We can visit that. Let me write down my other question now. But yeah, like, don't talk. About are you offended by that word? A woman should need something. She should. I'm a, I'm offended if she doesn't ask for something. Ask for something. <laughs> he knows what he wants, right? So are you right. Going to smash somebody who does nothing for you? Your ass should never be wetter than your wallet. If he's nothing for you, he's close, girl. Yes. <laughs> Do not spread for a broke man. Make sure you get something up front. Don't no spread for no bread. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Bobby. Yes. Oh, um, you have to hashtag that. Right. That's a t-shirt or something. Um, just let me know when when it go down. But <laughs> have you ever had a guy attempt to hurt you though by with that mentality, right? Like I'm gonna get mine and I'm gonna leave you how y'all leave me. I could imagine that. That turning sour real fast. Have you ever been in an experience like that? Guys try it, but here's the thing with me, and this is the thing that I talk about in my never let a man come first. And this are dumb, but get one version, this is a straight in your face. But the thing is, is that if a guy says something negative to me, I might cut him off right there. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, you think you're all that. I'm not gonna talk to you anymore. You know why? Because you're insecure and you got a problem with me being confident about myself. So right. I'm not going to accept a lot of stuff that guys come with. And I throw it back to them, Bobby. And sometimes I'm glad I'm on the phone, Bobby, because some stuff I say, <laughs> part of me might come up missing. <laughs> Thank you. But it's okay. okay. I've been to jail. I can tell when they've been to jail too. And I'll tell them you did some time because I could tell you if, if they're too philosophical, they'd have been to prison. Reading every day. <laughs> I ain't mad at you, but I'm just saying you got that jail mentality, like you know everything, and a woman don't know nothing, and you smarter than see. Honeybee can see it coming. Yeah. See, you about to be my big sister. I need you to be on game. I can't be out here getting caught up, girl. You know what's good. I'm like, uh, let me call my sister. Right. <laughs> so I don't feel right. What you think about this, girl? She gonna break it down <laughs> in two seconds, out, like. Bobby, I'll curse him out for you. <laughs> um, so I wanted to pair you guys together because you both have shared similar experiences, similar trauma with um, sexual abuse, uh, physical abuse, emotional abuse, and you've both reached healing through seemingly different different methods. Um, so yeah. what advice would you give a young woman who's trying to find her way out or she's just built up the courage to step away from a toxic situation and she's just trying to rebuild. Like how, how did each of you reach your healing? Well, let me say, like I said before, I had to stop. I had to stop everything. I had to stop. Get See my, okay. My, my thing I used to do was on to the next. That was my whole model. So as soon as I got out of one relationship on to the next, and I was just dragging baggage into another relationship, another relationship, which is why. And I was dating the same kind of man. I was dating the same person over and over, just different name. None of them had jobs. They all needed money. They they all was at home texting me, asking me for Western Union. So I had to like figure out like, why am I attracting these men? Why am I accepting this? Why am I, you know, why am I doing this? So that's why I had to take a break and work on Ashley and work on loving herself and knowing what she wants and what she needs and what what her goals are and, and what my purpose is and all of that stuff. So I had to like, that's when I had to put a pause on the dating. I had to, because it was a lot, like I was, it was a lot I was dealing with. So like I'm telling like for ladies, you have, you cannot keep going. If you keep getting into these broken relationships, you cannot just, just go to the next, you have to fix yourself. You have to fix yourself. You have to love yourself. You have to know what you want to do. 
take take your trips, hang out with your girlfriends, travel. I used to say, oh, I'm not going to go to Italy. I'm not going to go to Europe unless I have a boo or a husband. Please. Got my passport, was just in Italy, Europe. I was all over the place a few months ago. It, it, it's not like do what you got to do for yourself. Stop depending on men to do it for you. Men are great. But if you are not in the right state of mind, if you don't love yourself, you can't expect to be in a, a, a relationship that makes sense because you're all you want to do is please them. But when you leave them, you still feel lonely. There's still a void. So you got to work on yourself. You got to love yourself. Everything. It's all about you. Would you say it's that you. you think you're a fixer? Were you attracted to people that yes. you felt you had to fix or heal? I was the fixer. I was the help. I was the fixer. I can fix it. Oh, no problem. I had a guy lie to me about his name, his age, how much, you know, everything. But and then it, I didn't know because he lied to me. So I lied to my parents and my family, but I didn't know. But when I found out, I was like, hey, I fix it. You know, well, you know what? Your name's going to be Jamel for real, for real, even though your name's not Jamel. We're just going to keep going with it because it's OK. And I got you and I'm Superwoman and I'm going to fix it and I'm going to get you this job and I'm going to do your resume and I'm going to let you know that you need a bank account because that's all the men I dealt with. Mm. It was trash. I had, had to raise them. every last one of them, every last one of them. So that's why I said I'm not dating no more. Let me let me get my life together. Now, let me just say. I didn't know it was going to be this long now. <laughs> I just started dating last year and it was still trash. It it just wasn't the men that was asking me for money. It was still trash. I was like, damn, I did all of this and it's still getting the issues. It's like, all right. But you know, I, but the difference is I'm not with the, I'm not with it. I, I cut it real quick. I block you in two hours. Like it's not a game. I'm not with it anymore, but you definitely, definitely have to work on you yourself Honey. okay um ashley i just applaud you because i know i talk to so many women and you're just keeping it like a hundred percent real and this is exactly what i hear a lot of time in conversation i probably have every reason to not be sexually uninhibited and it's free spirit and toys and all that. I started experimenting with toys early on, like in my teenage years, like around 18. But at seven years old, I was molested by my grandfather, my great grandfather, excuse me. And so he had, this, all I remember is this, this uncircumcised penis. It didn't, it didn't smell right. It, it was ugly. You know, and so at seven years old, you shouldn't know what an uncircumcised penis look like, taste like, feel like, smell like, right? And mm -hmm. that's why I don't give men a break. If you want to know why I don't give them a break, it's because they don't deserve one. I don't know why we're being so nice to these guys. Ashley, you have to stop being so damn nice. You got to be neat. Why stop? <laughs> I stop. You did because you blocked him. You blocked him right away. You you get blocked in two hours. <laughs> two hours. That's progress. That's progress right there. Thank you. <laughs> yes. But you know, all of those things from the seven-year-old girl to the 16-year-old being raped on, on the streets of my hometown in New Orleans, that was quite an ordeal. And then the police officer being raped by him. And then he's saying, like, what are you going to do? Call the police. And, mm -hmm. you know, and then being battered by my husband when I got married. So I always say that, you know, I look for the good in everything. So I said, OK, at seven years old, I didn't lose my virginity. At 16 years old, I wasn't a virgin. And when my husband went upside my head one time, Honeybee was out. People were like, well, how are you going to make it? You just 23 years old with a baby that's one year old. Honey, mm -hmm. God will find a way. That's right. I look back at him. This oh, is crap. And my father used to beat my mother. So I was like, I'm not going to be that girl. This cycle shall not repeat itself. That's and right. I told him, I said, you'd be better off cheating on me because I could deal with cheating. And infidelity, whereas to a lot of women, they just get all up and on. I could deal with that. And I told him that at 22, when I got married, I told him I could deal with that. The one thing I will never deal with is if you put your hands on me to see what infidelity and guys cheating and stuff like that. It's not that I'm just going to condone it. 
If you smash it, I'll smash it. If you fuck it, I'll fuck it. See, I'm gonna let you know. I'm gonna let you set the tone, but don't let me find out that this you is funny. You doing. Real so funny. Like a try me. Like, go ahead. See what happens. I can do it better. That's what right. 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 Sure. Up front. It's a disclosure. <laughs> Women get like, oh, he cheated, and they cry, and they get sad, and they feel this way and that way. And then they still sit there and be faithful and honest. I'm not saying you have to go smash the first thing that's common. Right. Like, I'm going to be very selective when I do decide to step out and do it. And when I do it, I'm not going to hide it. And when it <laughs> happens, I don't hide stuff. I really don't. I really don't. I've done it before. Guys don't like it. I pick the guy. He well, they don't like that. Yeah, you can't, you can't tell them they they want they want to do it, but you can't do it. Exactly. Well, oh, when you, you tell them, see, that's the thing you have to stop saying. You can't. Don't say they want to do it, but you can't. Say they want to do it, but you can. In their head, in their head, they, they in their head, I can't. It crushes them. I can. you have to verbalize it for us. Yeah, all right. Because words are powerful. Hey. Very powerful. Um. So I, I asked that question because when. I'm on social media and I see the average person talking about surviving R. Kelly. It's a lot of blame on the girls, on the victims. Yes. And I wanted to show the different mindsets. First off, you ladies are very intelligent. You're articulate. You are self-sufficient. So it's not always one type of person that goes through this type of scenario. Um, so to those people that are detracting from R. Kelly, who was a grown man in these instances and should have had his own self-control and mm -hmm. moral compass, they are placing the blame on the survivors, the people who've experienced this. What do you have to say to those people? Who are placing the blame? Correct. Or that are criticizing the victim. Why'd you take so long to speak out? They were fast. They wanted it. Da, da, da. Those people. Yeah. Okay, so honestly, okay, I was molested when I was 11. Have yet to, it was a, it was a te detective and I never pressed charges. I never brought it, any authorities in it. I just never did anything. Some people know, some people don't know. It can happen to other people. It was, it was, I, I was, it was fear. There was stuff that he was telling me that got into my head and my mental that or they won't believe me, or I'm going to get in trouble. It was just a lot that was going on. So I understand that they can take this long to say something or speak out. I, I totally get that. Now, the fact that everybody's blaming the girls, you know, it's a lot of, you You never know what they're thinking, um, what he's telling them, because verbal abuse is real. And he was verbally abusing them. He was physically abusing them. And that stuff will mess with your head. So you on the outside looking in, you're saying, oh, why now? Why now? Why not now? Mm -hmm. There's not an expiration date to, at the end of the day, I was molested at 11. It, it didn't expire. It happened. You know, she, Honeybee was molested or, or raped at seven and it didn't expire. It happened. So regardless of if I said it immediately or now, it happened. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's just like, and it's crazy. I went on, I go on his page and then I see people asking him, oh, like he's promoting a tour and they're asking him, oh, when you come into South Carolina, when you come and ride it. So it's like they're blaming the girls, but they still going, and his sales, of course, have spiked up, mm -hmm. his music sales. It's like blame the girl, blame the parents, blame everybody except him. Exactly. Don't point the finger at him. Don't, they don't, they don't even want to, are, are they even blaming the people who helped? Because he had help, but he, he could do this on his own. Go on exactly. tour, have a wife, have kids, uh, travel on all over the world, and got all these girls in different hotels and in different sections of his house. He had help, but the fact that everybody is blaming the girls, I have a problem with. Because if say if I say if I want to come out, say if somebody encourages me to come out, which I gonna blame me because I didn't say nothing when I was eleven. Mm -hmm. When I was 11 years old and I was scared, and my father's a pastor, and it was happening in my church, like so, it's my fault. Like, I understand. I didn't, I, I haven't come forth. It, like, you know, people know, but I haven't like pressed charges. I just kind of moved on and I forgave him. And I'm just like, you know, whatever. It's all, it's, it's whatever. It's easier to just not, it's not just like, it. 
Yeah, I, I wanted you. I wanted I'm, you said something very important that the detractors make it harder for somebody who might want to speak out to feel comfortable because they know they're going to be questioning it and may not be believed. And I just think that's awful. So I'm, I'm really glad that you pointed that out too. Yeah, no, seriously, it's just it's, it's it's retarded that people are blaming. You know, you know, you hear the different ages, like some of the ages you like. Hold on, sis. But you know, <laughs> to each his own. It's just. Like if I if I decide to come out, are they gonna do that to me too? It's like yeah, everybody right. has it's, it's it's what you're comfortable with and what you're ready to 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 go through. If you're ready to go through that fire, because this is fire right here. Yeah. Everybody's blaming them. Everybody's saying they're stupid. Everybody's saying they're dumb. Everybody's saying this, that, and the third. But we don't. You know, it's, everybody can't be lying and saying the same thing. Exactly, it's like hundreds. They, you guys, all have the same storyline. All of y'all, it's the same thing. He has the same patterns. This is what he does. This is what he was molested too when he was seven. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's it's just the thing. So, can't say all hundred women is are lying and they're dumb. Yeah, I, I think agree. part of the problem we have in our society is that. A lot of times people just don't want to believe that their icon or somebody that they love, like a Bill Cosby, you know, we all mm -hmm. looked up to him, that this person could possibly be a molester, a rapist, mm -hmm. or whatever that particular individual is doing. So some people hop on the bandwagon for a person that you know nothing about. You right. might love R. Kelly's music, but you don't know shit about exactly. R. Kelly. Exactly. I believe the girls, because I believe that when that many women come out against you, just like with Bill Cosby, um, now we're dealing with R. Kelly, but even the Harvey Weinsteins and the Matt Lauer, I know a lot of these white men, they didn't got their shit swept under the carpet so they <laughs> in the media like they should be. Right. They need to be. And R. Kelly needs to be locked up. Yes, 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 yes. So, you know, women jump on and they want to support and I love R. Kelly. I don't care what nobody say. You don't even know R. Kelly. You love his music, and not he him. Locked up and he was kissing in your mouth. I'm sure oh, you would feel the same way. You know, unless you like that kind of thing. But um, it's up it's that white people so stuff right I'll there. Say, we have to stop. We really have to stop as a society, as women, jumping on the bandwagon, not thinking. There are so many women and we're trying to change that one at a time. Bobby, you're doing it with your platform for your show. Ashley's doing it. I'm doing it. And there's other women out there doing it too. We have to change the mindset that <laughs> women feel like it's okay for women to be abused, especially in the black community, right? Absolutely. If on a lot of white girls, I'm sure this turnout would be very different. Mm -hmm. but it's Absolutely. Women, young black Ooh, girls, these girls are hurting. They, you know, it's like, all the things they may never be right again. Hopefully they will. My thing is that bad things happen to good people. Mm -hmm. So when a bad thing happened to you, you have to at least try to get back into a space where it does not destroy the rest of your life right. moving forward. But right. as far as R. Kelly is concerned, I, I don't want to hear another R. Kelly song. I'm not supporting him. You can. I, I am nothing nothing not not supporting him and i just feel like women who don't really understand it if you haven't been through it right shouldn't be out there degrading other women who have been sexually abused why she didn't say something earlier and just like we were saying when the police says who are you going to call the police and you just a teenager what are you going to do i know a lot of women are still holding it in they're not talking mm -hmm. about it at least talk about it right Four, I was talking about it. You can pick up my book number four. I talked about everything we just talked about mm -hmm. in the book. And people were like, why are you putting that section in your book? Because I want women to know I'm more like you. We are more alike than we are different. Mm -hmm. We have to stop coming for each other. For real. For real. So, so <clears throat> what do you think about one of the girls was rescued. The one that was rescued, her mom like went to the hotel and got her out. She mm -hmm. ended up going back three days later. So, I mean, you not you aren't psychologist. I'm not asking you to like speak expertly, but what do you think it is that would make somebody? Obviously, she has some level of awakening to leave in the first place. What do you think made her go back? Sometimes I feel like with women in abusive relationships, they actually fall in love with their abuser. 
they're really attached to that person. They feel like they can't live without them. The person has already made them feel like they're not anything anyway. Mm -hmm. Nobody else is going to want you. And they return to that situation, just like women who are being beaten. They return to that situation. It's like in my head, I'm not putting anybody down, but in my head, I go, how do you just show up for ass whipping? You know, it's like, you know what's coming the next day or whatever. So it was something about how he was treating her that had her mind on lock. And when a person's mind is on lock, you can't unlock that. They mm -hmm. have to have had enough for them to be done. And Just she like his song. that was her life and that's what she knew. And it was something about it that she felt like as as bad as it was, that she still felt like that was a better place for her to be. So she returned back to him. It was it was familiar. It was familiar. She got used to it. Um, she probably figured nobody else is gonna be with her, you know. And when you love a man and we are in love, you do stupid things. So that was, you know, it, even though she got away, she went right back because she was familiar and this is what she's used to and this is what she thinks is normal. Yeah. And and you, when you got the verbal abuse, yeah. that mental abuse is bad. So you hear them things in your head over and over and over. And he says, he loves you. Nobody's going to love you like me. You're not, you're ugly. You're this, you're that. So you, you, you bring yourself down and you go to what's familiar. Love Just like they say, you can't bring, you can bring a horse to water, but you can't make the horse drink it. You can take the woman out of the abusive relationship, but you can't make her stay away from the abusive relationship. It has to be them ready to do it. You can't do it. Just like a drug, um, a drug a person who's addicted to drugs. I can bring you to the, 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 the rehab, but if you're not willing and ready to walk away, you're going to be right back there where you came. Mm-hmm. It's all a it's all a head thing. It's a it's a mental thing. It's a mental thing. So, mm -hmm. not surprised. So, mm. of course, again, among the people they're blaming, I have heard people criticize the parents. Okay. Now, I remember being a rambunctious teenager, and like I'm telling my mom, I'm at dance practice, and I'm at the movies with my little boyfriend or whatever. So, as well intended as parents can be in terms of keeping up with their children, like it's still up to the girls to an extent. Yeah. Um, but I, I would like to hear your thoughts on that. Do you think the parents could have, should have been more involved? Do you think it's possible that they were kind of pimping these girls out? Or, or do you think the girls just were kind of doing their own thing and the parents kind of really didn't know what was happening? It could be, it could be a pimping situation for the money. And then parents don't know. I, I, I'm at work all day. Like I can only imagine a parent, you have more than one kid, you're at work, you cannot monitor your kids every 2.3 seconds. It's impossible. You have to get to work, be at work, come home, take care of the household. You trust that you trust your kids is going to do the right thing, go to school. You teach them certain things, but you can't make them do it. Just like you can't make the girl get out of the abusive relationship. She has to want to do it. So I told, you know, I cut school. I My cutting was limited because there was a, the persistent principal that went to my church was my assistant principal. So it was a little limited of what I could and couldn't do. But um parents can't watch their kids every two you you can't. It's impossible. You can't. So everybody's blaming parents. There's certain things they could have done when they found out, but depending on how like you you know that mother who went to the hotel and was going around hotel, she wasn't playing. Yeah. And some parents got dangled money and they just took the money and left. It's you know it's it's different sections and different stories different parents, every, you know, stuff like that. So he just wants to hold everybody accountable, except the person who's actually nobody. the women are Kelly. Nobody look at, well, it was the parents fault. Well, it was the girl's fault. Well, no, but it I was do. our Kelly brother fault. It was his, his the tourist fault. It was the, the music industry fault. Cause they knew what he was doing. It's everybody fault. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But exactly. they buy the music. But one thing I will say, like with parents, it's like a lot of times we are busy and we have a lot to do and we're working and doing different things. Even with my son, it's like with my son, I was very in tune with him. A lot of times we're not in tune with our children. Can we keep them from doing what they're going to do if they want to do something? Absolutely not. Can we be in tune? Yes. My son could walk through the door and I would look in his eyes and I go, what's wrong? 
He said, oh, nothing's wrong. I said, something is wrong. Something mm. is like very wrong. I don't mm. know what's bothering you, but I could see it. Mm. I would literally sit on his lap, like sideways across his lap. And on as soon as he sat down, he knew I was going to sit down on top of him. I said, we could like spend the night right here with me sitting on your lap, or you could just tell me you're not going to move. I am not moving out of this position until you tell me. What's because wrong? The difference is, is that one minute, one second, one hour, one day, you could save somebody's life and you don't even know it. So when parents are dealing with their children, my thing is what I'm saying is just try to be more in tune with them. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times parents between working, be trying to ha have a social life of their own, mm -hmm. dating on their own. You know, if you got a man or a boyfriend, right. you don't want to believe that your man was the one that molested your child. You don't want to believe that R. Kelly was the one that molested your child. And you don't want to be the one to come out against that because you figure financially, how am I going to fight this case? Mm -hmm. And you know, and so a lot of reasons why parents convince themselves not to really stand up. I'm not blaming the parents. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying as parents, you can be more active in terms of paying attention to what your right. child is going through. Yeah. My son was like one year old and he said two words one day. He said, uh, booty hurt. I said, excuse me, what did you say? <laughs> you might have hemorrhoids, but we going to the doctor. Yeah, yeah. I took it to the doctor and I never took it back to that babysitter again. That was a baby mm. trust. I trust her wholeheartedly, but when her man got out of prison, you see, he went to stay with her. And mm. so I'm like, he's never said this before, and he may have never even touched my son. But this just to be careful. said it, you know what I'm saying? So we have to pay attention yeah. to our mm -hmm. kids, to what's going on in their lives from when they're little to these girls, you know. Use discernment and be in tune. You have yeah. to. You have to be present, as present mm -hmm. as possible, as possible. Definitely. So I saw an argument from a mother of a daughter, which I thought was interesting. Like you have a little girl. She all but dismissed R. Kelly of his acts because he too was a victim. And her point was that he's sick and he, he needs help more than he needs us to disdain him as survivors who potentially could have made the choice to be perpetrators as well, but you chose not to act out in that way. How do you feel about thoughts like that, sentiments like that? Where like, give him a pass because he he was hurt too. Really? You don't get a pass. You don't get a pass. <laughs> no way. Yeah, because just like saying somebody shot you, so you have the right to go shoot somebody else. I right. mean, we can look at that all day long if we're trying to give people passes and all these other things, but because his brother didn't go out and do it that we know of, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And his brother who's a year younger was saying that he was sexually abused too. Mm -hmm. But no, R. Kelly does not get a pass because he was sexually abused. Yeah, he may need help for that. Yeah. I'm not saying that he doesn't, but to the uh, degree and magnitude that he went to abuse these women, that, no, you, you are sick in the head. Mm -hmm. That's so, somebody who knows what he was doing yeah. was wrong. Yeah, he had them signing documents and locked up, and they couldn't talk to their family and friends. Like you know what you're doing is all you know, you know, you know, you know what you're doing, and um, get in the past. That's that's not cool. Because how many people, how many people been abused? How many people have been molested? I don't go around molesting little kids because I was molested. That's mm -hmm. just nasty, and I know it's wrong. And it's crazy that the the molester have their. I I would think that. You have you being a molester and you having daughters, you won't want to do that to somebody else's daughter. Well, people are sick, mm -hmm. but I don't go around touching on little kids. I know it's wrong. I know it's wrong. So no, he don't get a pass. He's a grown up. He's a grown man. He's a grown up and he knows it's wrong. He knows how to write songs. They say he's a genius. He knows how to make millions. He should know how to not touch people's kids. Yeah. He ain't stupid. He's not stupid. He's very intelligent. He knows how to do all of this. He knows how to even drop albums right now while this all this stuff is going on for sales because it's working. He is very smart. So the pass is not, you don't get the pass, boo. No, no you don't get that pass. <laughs> that was cute, though. <laughs> no, yeah. I thought Honey Bee was going to add more. Um, I mean, I really always can, but I'm a tech <laughs> like, well, in my head about how disgusting all of this really is. You know? But, 
No, there's no reason for anybody to give R. Kelly a pass because he was molested. The things that he have done to these young girls and you hear them speak and you see how heartbroken they are and how distraught they are, you know, they may never be the same. So you just get to recklessly ruin everybody's life because of something that happens to you. Absolutely not. But men are like that. I have actually heard a guy say, because one woman did something to him that somebody's daughter was going to have to pay. That was his wow. exact words. Somebody's daughter is going what? to have to pay. Wow. pay. Yeah. Which is why I wrote head games. Because I feel like with head games, in the book, head games that I've written, a lot of people feel like, um, if you read the reviews and stuff, some people feel like, oh my gosh, you're too hard on men in the book. That's a problem with a lot of women. You don't want to be hard on them because you think every guy is nice. But then one out of three women have experienced sexual assault. Mm -hmm. And it's more than that that will experience sexual sexual assault at some point in their lifetime. So if you're not going to get it together now, girl, and start talking to these men, like, I don't know. I just talk to them real crazy. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe you need I to give a, a class. Yeah, the fan you need to give a workshop. I was like, who the hell is that? My son said, you <laughs> damn paranoid. I said, I know, because I'll be talking... And, you know, the first thing a man will say in defense, you know, I've had men tell me your problem, Mary Honeybee Morrison, is you need a man. And I say, you need a man, too. Oh, because until you done had one, until you <laughs> done had an art, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Men need to be more sensitive. Definitely. But I mean, that's that's social conditioning, right? Men are not allowed to be in tune with their feelings. They're right. not allowed to cry. Some of them can't even say I love you even to their own family members. So mm -hmm. how can maybe, how can women, I guess mothers, right? Because then Honey Bee ain't helping raise no men. <laughs> Ashley, maybe you. <laughs> no, I'm, some days are over. <laughs> some days are over. <laughs> but how can we again. help change that in society, right? Like what, what can be done, if anything? Do you think anything can be done? Because this is centuries of conditioning, you know? First and foremost, women need to stop taking responsibility for a man's feelings. It is not your responsibility to make him feel loved and all of these other things, because in exchange for that, a lot of times women do not get the same thing. Men do not reciprocate. They feel like a woman is just a place to make his deposit, just to have sex. A lot of women have frustrated sex with the woman. You talk to him for 10 minutes. He got all these problems. I'd be like, oh, honey, BK, talk to you. You got too many damn problems. Ain't nothing in your life right. So right. women have to stop trying to save. Stop trying to save guys and do more like what Ashley is doing in terms of focusing on yourself and your mm -hmm. happiness and traveling. Like you said, I say stay passport ready because all okay. out of America yeah. in America. I'm a black ass woman in America. When I go outside of America with that passport, you American, American. Oh, honey, they love black women in other places. In Italy, they love black women. Oh, yes, they do. See, I need to get these stamps. I need to get these stamps popping. Pop <laughs> Barbados, I'm about to get it popping right now. I'll be with Barbados in a few weeks. Stop limiting yourself in terms of as a woman of what you think about um, men and all these. Do not. Put a man first. Always let him like or love you more because they will fall in line. They already know with me if they call, where are we going? You want to go somewhere? Yes, let's go to Mexico. Okay. You know, you got to buy the ticket. You know, you got to put up. The, you know what I'm saying? Be my itinerary. Expectations and standards. The fastest way to get rid of a man is to ask him for something. Mm. That's a word. <laughs> that is. That's a whole word. Yeah. The, the other day I was, I started talking to this guy and so I talked to him and the, the first day I talked to him, I um, you know, we were just talking and I said, okay, I'm about to go to the store. I'll call you back. Okay. I never did. Next day he calls. I fell asleep on the couch. I saw the phone and I was like, not right now. He calls back again. So I answer. He goes, oh, I was about to text you and ask you if you're married. And I'm like, why? He's like, oh, because you never called me back yesterday and you didn't answer your phone. I was like, okay. Then I was like, okay, well, no, I'm not married. Um, then we start talking and then he goes, I feel like I'm getting depressed. I said, what? I said, okay. So I, and then I found myself like kind of counseling him and I said, wait a minute. I said, I gotta call you back. 
because he got quiet. He stopped talking. He told me stuff ain't going on right in his life. I said, I'll call you back and I blacked him. I said, no, 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 baby. I'm not about to fix this man either. I cannot man. fix no more men. I'm the helper. I can help you with your situation, but you need something for me to help you with. But I'm not about to fix your whole situation. Yeah. I'm not about to help you not be depressed. And you nicer than me because if he would have told me all of that stuff, it's like, how did we gotta go? <laughs> I bought them, sis. It's getting better. I'm getting better. I have told guys, look, do me a favor, and they'll go, What? I said, Don't you ever call me again as long as you live. I'm done with this conversation. <laughs> and I'll tell them because we don't have to be nice and you, you did it your way. And that's nice. That's good. And I'm not even saying it's wrong or anything's wrong with it. But I'm not even going to, if you text me and then say, oh, I, and then we finally talk, I call you back, you text you to call like what you're saying. And then, oh, I text you earlier, but you didn't. I said, let me explain something to you. I'm a grown ass woman. I said, I was busy. And so I didn't call you. I said, so we're going to do one or two things. We're going to change this damn conversation or I'm getting the hell off the phone. <laughs> because what I don't do is answer to my whereabouts and where I am and what I was doing and why I didn't respond to your damn call. I don't even like good morning text messages because I figure you cut the case and send them to every day. Anyway. <laughs> So you can what? bypass me and keep me on that one because I'll be in it. I don't like all the fucking pleasantries. Good morning, beautiful. What do you want? <laughs> oh, you know, I know I am Bro, you a you in text messages. I don't have time for it. Look, this, you said you're from New Orleans, that. right? I, I feel it. like Drake wrote nice for what just because of you. Like you <laughs> are the catalyst of it. <laughs> I am from, and don't make me pull out my voodoo doll. So, you know. You be doing voodoo on them, girl. Pushing hands. That's what we need to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. I'm serious. Since you're going to get me in trouble with this, I can't wait to chop this up. This is going to be fun. <laughs> they yeah, be like, who did you have I on there? Who? I, can't, I can't stand when a man call you and then he texts you and say, yeah, so I called you. I got call ID. I can see it. Right. I'm good. I was unavailable. I, I <laughs> Stop clocking me, son. Look, <laughs> Honey Bee is making me realize I'm being way too I'm nice to fools. No I gotta chill out on that. I be letting too much stuff slide. Like, nope, not no more. No, I can't stand it. It, it irks. Like, stop it. Don't, don't do that. I block you in a minute. Like, stop. Or the what you doing? Call text call all day. ID. My phone works. It works. <laughs> I see. I saw you call me. Matter of fact, I'm looking at you right now, texting me, and I just chose not to respond because I'm busy. Yes. Putting my lashes on or something. Like, oh. I don't got time. I have things to do. Hello? Yeah. And then the other thing is that women have to start paying attention. I'm telling you, read the Dixie Dom and Never Let a Man Come First book or even Hair Games. You have to start paying attention. You can tell up front when a guy have bad dick, but you still go there anyway, right? So if he's. Well, let, please let, tell me, please, so I can <laughs> have <laughs> any further decisions. Can you tell a guy has bad dick before decisions. you yeah. actually get intimate? Like, how? Like, is it oh, a signal? Absolutely. Is it some sign? What are the signs to know that this guy got bad dick and it ain't even worth going down that road? Okay, one thing for me, hygiene is real big. So if a guy is bad on hygiene, if he think he could be out all day and pull his thing thing out and just want you to suck on it or do something, no, you pick that one, right? No salty nuts. I don't want it. I don't want it. You guys have bad um, mannerisms. It depends on what you like. I like a soft touch. So you can't be trying to touch me. Uh, no, you you ain't gonna be no good if he doesn't have patience. If a lot of guys are like impatient with things. He's not going to be a patient lover. He's not going to all of a sudden get into the bedroom and be attentive to you. If he's not attentive to you outside of the bedroom, opening the doors, touching you the right way, making sure that, you know, your mental is good. Mm -hmm. um, kiss, I can't stand a stiff tongue or a lizard tongue trying to get in my mouth because I'm thinking you're going to be bad at eating pussy. It's <laughs> not, not going to work for honey, but I'm going to need you to have to soften that up. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of guys that come with so much tension, you have to pay attention as a woman outside of the bedroom, right? Right. And some of them, they fuck so fast and they're done. You know what I'm saying? It's like, no, you're not going to be good. I've even told a guy in the midst of sex, he had taken me out eight times. I'll say, okay, honey, but you might as well just go ahead on. <laughs> just go ahead on and break him off some. And I was right. He was bad. He was bad in Man. bed. I tried to slow him down in the bedroom. I'm like, slow down. And he was like a toddler, right? How you grab a kid and you say, stop running. And, and it's still going. They start taking off again. Oh, my <laughs> I, God. After he took 
pissed off the second time, I said, you know what you need to do? Lay your ass on the other side of the bed and go to sleep because I'm getting ready. I talked to him just like that. <laughs> you can't follow instructions. You can't, you can't follow instructions, follow sir. You're instructions. fired. Right. And he never got off. He never got to ejaculate. Do I care? No, it is not my responsibility to make sure you come. Because if I'm not coming, ain't nobody coming. Nobody coming. <laughs> if I don't get my 60 seconds, God damn it, it's off. It's over. <laughs> Cut it. But, but no, I do think that's really important. Like, I think we're talking about sex specifically, but I do agree that sometimes women, we invest way too much in a guy before he's even earned it. So yeah. I, I feel you in that sense. You know what I mean? Like if he, he can't meet your needs and he's not willing to learn how to love you the way you want and need to be loved, whether it's physically or emotionally, then like, why, why are we putting yeah, in the effort? Time. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Even if he pays for dinner and take you out and show you a good time, you're still not obligated to have sex with him. No, cause you just fed me a meal. I could feed myself. Like you didn't do anything special. Mm -hmm. I'll feed <laughs> myself. You're trying to kiss me on first time, like, sir. You just you just gave me some food. Like, relax, calm down, <laughs> settle down. That was just that was just a, a piece of fish. Like, relax, calm down. All right. like, you did nothing special. I can do all of this and more. So, like, why 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 do I need you in my life? Like, why 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 do you need to be present? Like, you need to need to bring it. Like. Mm -hmm. Don't don't give me no fish and salad and think you're gonna get some buns. Add value you know, to me. Give him a give him a pussy quiz too. Ask where the G spot is at. Ask <laughs> where is at. Ask how many secretion points women have. We have seven. They have one, but most of them don't know we have. Seven. What points? What are they called? Secretion points. Secretion points. Yes. Secretion. Yes. And three are orgasmic. Yes. Why are you gonna tell me to get my pen and paper something? Right. I, I want to share something, but I'm trying to decide if I want this on YouTube live. Oh, I no. learned something about my body in 2018 that I did not know like was possible. And you named it earlier. I was like, wait, that can happen. I feel like I've already, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to say it on live. But I'll tell y'all off, off air. <laughs> off the air. But it, off, it was just so mind blowing. I'm like, wait, like that can happen there. Like, all, right. <laughs> yes. all kind of oh, yeah. off the air, off the air. <laughs> 22 ways we can climax. And this is something I like too. I don't know if you can see this little ring right here. Yes. What is it? We have so many toys that can help guys if they change their attitude. This is a, uh, <laughs> it's a cock ring. change the attitude. You'll be turning them out, honey. Right. So, you know, you can't say it ain't going to fit you. And then this part right here. Is that, is that a cock ring? What is it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> and so, yeah, so it'll slow him down too with all that fast climaxing. And then this is the clit every time he goes in. This is going to stimulate your clitoris, and so it's good for her and it's good, you know, for the guy. So a lot of times women don't have vaginal orgasms, but a little external stimulation while you're inside can help her. Get did you know one out of four women do not have vaginal orgasms on a regular basis? One out of four. That's, that that's is so depressing. Yeah, seventy-five percent of women are not having, and they having babies, but the men don't know what they're doing. Yeah. No, that's crazy. Cause my friend, she told me when I was in college, she her daughter was eleven, and she said she just started to climax like the year before. I said, "What? Mm -hmm. What the hell is going on here?" And honestly, I can relate. Cause my first boyfriend, nothing was going down. When I tell you, I'm not even kidding. I used to watch the clock. It'll be. 12.57, we done at 1 p.m. Like, oh, one, one o'clock, just done, just done. I'm just sitting there like. Three to seven minutes, that's all it takes for them. That's why we gotta get it, we gotta train them. And I've given classes, I've given one-on-one -on -one classes to men to try to, yeah, my clothes ain't coming off, so you, you ain't gonna pay me that kind of money. <laughs> We're going to sit down and I'm going to teach you some things. Right. We're going to have and diagrams and props. Because I can <laughs> yes. teach guys some things to, on how to please a woman. Because right. they learn from porn and from their dirty uncle. Mm -hmm. they learn I was going to ask, what's... um. A, how do how can a woman broach that conversation, right? Because sometimes it's us not feeling comfortable telling him that he don't know what he's doing. So that's the first question. And then the next question would be, what are some tips that you could give guys other than like be open minded? Because I feel like that's we've already kind of set the tone for that, right? They need to be open minded to feedback right. and maybe criticism, right? Like it's not going to kill you to to hear like where you can improve. Um, but in addition to that. You know what? What can they do to be a little bit better to make sure we we feel in the love? Well, you can tell them that. You know what? 
I like you to suck on my nipples too, because men nowadays want you to suck, suck on their nipples and tease them and play. You know, I'm funny with all this stuff, but it's true. No, no that's, that's, that's real. <laughs> to do the things to them that they should be doing to us. So whatever you like as a woman, you have to be able to express it. I say express it in the bedroom during the act. A lot of people say, oh, don't do it during the act because no, if I'm not getting pleased, I need to tell you yeah. right here and right now. Because otherwise you're just suffering through it. What right movie here. was that? Was it Wait Until It's Hell? I think Robin yes, yes, was yes. acting. She was just laying there she so bored. Like I oh said that guy. Just on top of her. her. Just, just, remember when she was going, rrr, rrr. He started growling. <laughs> doing nothing. <laughs> doing too. nothing. Like, go to sleep. <laughs> One simple thing that guys can take the initiative to do or women can just say to do, especially if you're a missionary style or if you're on top of him, a pillow, a pillow underneath a woman's hips during missionary will allow the guy to simulate her G spot more, which may actually help her to have that vaginal orgasm. Because when you're flat on the mattress, he's bypassing every time he goes mm -hmm. in, he's not mm -hmm. hitting it directly. So even if you're on top of him, Put a pillow underneath him to give you more of an angle when you're riding. See, there's so many different things that women can do and guys can do. You know, just do it. Don't ask for permission. Just do it. Just do it. Like, I was about to say, I just, I heard this, but I think I heard it from your page. Did you say that on Instagram? I did. I yeah, did. so I was like, this sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you said that on Instagram. I'm like, why does this? Is yeah. it no, I heard you said it on it Instagram. It does work. And women need to learn how to go into the zone. Zone out on him. Do something for effect. Now, if he not crazy. Do, that, get, I, do what you got to do for your I 60 seconds. Just right. for, for <laughs> effect. To see how he go. Choke him. Choke him in the middle of it. Just, just If you're on top, just grab him and choke him. You know, I mean, <laughs> women have to get out of the box of being like letting the guy take control. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what they usually do. Don't control. choke him if he's been to prison, though. Right? <laughs> don't choke him if he's been in the military. Right, like out. He done been, don't say how to be. I choked him. Are you speaking from experience, oh, honey? No, me. No. <laughs> right. This sounds a little like she's like learned firsthand. Right. Don't do it on crazy stuff like that. I don't mind choking, but I ain't never been hit as a result of choking. So I don't want my girls to have that. <laughs> know who you choking, ladies. That's the disclaimer right here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, I'm definitely enjoying this conversation, but we have reached over an hour now, so oh. I don't want to take all y'all night, but I would like to offer you the platform again, just to plug your work where people can keep up with you on social media. And if you offer any other services that can help anybody who watched this broadcast. Well, I'll go first. Um, my Instagram is Ashley, A-S-H-L-E-Y. W G I L L E T T. It's Ashley W Gillette. And then I have Red Flags Run on Instagram. Um, I have a podcast called The Love Rehab, where I interview bloggers, influencers, celebrities, some, um, and we just talk about cute nicknames and their own Red Flags Run stories. And I usually bring awareness to a crazy Red Flags Run story that hit the news or a local story. And I also do relationship consulting where I people come to me and they're not sure if they're in a, if they're in something toxic because some people just be in it and their head is just not in the game. And I just bring light to them, both men and women, because I've had them come to me both. And also working on Red, um, Red Flags Run 2 with my friends' situations and also another story because I just started dating last year and I still have some stories to add to the book. So that's it for now. That's what I got going on. Thank you, Ashley. I absolutely no love it. Okay, so you can find me on social, marymorrison.com. You can go to my website. Also, I am Celeb Honeybee, C E L E B, Honeybee, H O N E Y B, on Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. But on mm -hmm. Facebook, I'm the real Mary B. So you can follow me there. I have about 800,000 followers. You can jump in and join in on that particular page. I also do a talk show on World Star on Tuesdays. So you can just tune into my page at marymorrison.com to watch my who I'm interviewing. I interview like really interesting people a lot of times and talking about what's going on. 
So those are some of the things that I'm doing. I'm sure I'm forgetting something as Ashley mm -hmm. had forgotten something because we have so much going yeah, on. Yeah, so much going on. I love I it. I do weddings I too. It. I do a lot. Adult toys. <laughs> I love adult toys on my website. You can go ahead and shop there as well. And a lot of the toys that are on my site are like that ring I just showed you, which I mean, what I mean by that, they're toys that don't look like toys. Oh, and I almost forgot my YouTube page. I'm putting up videos about these 22 types of orgasms for women and different things that people can watch because I want more women to learn how to climax and not care as much about these. <laughs> I yeah, love you it. A real one. Like I said, guard your heart and guard your purses all 2019, ladies. Okay, it's a new day. Honey, we didn't put us on game. Ashley didn't gave us the tools we need to recognize these red flags, baby. No more L's in love this year, right? That's right. No more. <laughs> Yeah. All right, ladies, thank you so much for joining me on the Put Yourself On podcast. Mm -hmm. I actually have to ask this before I let you go. I need from each of you your, um, what, what's my question? Your one piece of advice for the modern hustler as two authors, um, what advice would you give somebody who's ready to share their story, um, be it fiction or not? Well, I'll say um, write your stuff down, write it down and just execute. You have to, you can't, you can't have the work and don't put the action behind it. You can write the book, but you don't, you didn't give it to the publisher or the editor. So you have to just execute, execute your goals, push for your purpose. Just know what you want to do and just bang it out. No more talking about it. Just do it. That's what we got to do. Just do it. Just do it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a lot of people who want to write a book aren't really like serious about it because they're afraid. Don't be afraid to tell your story. Don't worry about censoring the first edition of what comes out of your head. Leave your censoring for your rewrites. Just get your story out. Stop coming to people like me and Ashley and other people who actually already published saying, I have a great idea for a book because the author without an idea for a book needs to get a job. And so <laughs> I need to do something else if this ain't working. So what I'm saying is that try, it's better to come to a person like us and say, you know, I've written this and I'm stuck or can you help me with this, that, and the third. That's different from saying, I want to give you this idea. You write the book and we gonna make some money. It doesn't work that way. My son is an award-winning children's author. Mm -hmm. And he is doing a lot of amazing things. And his web created, the letter B, and then the word creative.com. Now, he will help you from start to finish, to finish. from conception to getting it in print. Because you can do it yourself. If you're trying to get with a publisher, like I've been with a publisher for almost 20 years, I'm working not right now on my 2020 book. So you know mm -hmm. how long you're going to have to wait to double dutch to get in with a publisher probably two or three years. And these days you can do it by yourself. You can do mm -hmm. it. Yourself. So my son would be able to help more. I don't do all that. I can't hold your hand all day because it's, it's just not something I want to do, you know, but if you want to have a conversation, if you want to take me to dinner, if you want to oh, yeah, yeah. to Mexico, right? Yeah, right? <laughs> got to take me to Mexico, but see my girls, I'll meet you at the cafe. Yeah. Oh, I really will, but I'm not doing that for a man. No, no, no. So, but but yeah. you just gotta write. You just gotta write, and don't focus. You know, a lot of people focus on editing. Let the editors do that. Just write. Just get it out. Do yeah. your part. Do yeah. your part. Let that, and then you know, handle hire other people to do that part. Yeah, just write. Book setters, typesetters. You know, and all some of these things are not even that expensive. As Ashley saying, it's not even that expensive. You just have to do your research. And if you hit me up with something like that, I'll give you the resources on where to go and who can do what this that, and the third for a reasonable price. But you got to write the book first. Right. Right. Well, that's awesome to yep. know. And I'm sure people will be contacting you when it's time. I'm going to be ready to tell my story. I'm going to hit y'all up. But in the meantime, I look <laughs> yes. forward to both of you. Yes. Yes. Um, I look forward to both of you guys. Um, continue progression again. Thank you so much for your transparency and sharing, um, your story and your journey as to inspire others and for just having a good little key y'all. This was fun. <laughs> this was fun.
Thank you, Bobby. Thank no you problem. so much, Bobby. Talk to you guys later. Well, you guys don't leave, but everybody who's watching, if you watch the replay or what have you, um, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Bobby Pin. Um, I am Bobby Pin on Facebook and visit the BobbyPin.com for this podcast, interviews, all things entertainment and media. All right. Until next time, take care.